right, so today's message, uh, you'll see the connection here in a little bit, but today's message, um, I actually, when I talked to Chase about this, I said, it doesn't have to be like immediately. And he said, actually, it does. <laughs> actually, it needs to be the first Sunday in January uh, because this is the perfect time for what you're going to share. So um, the title of the message is called A Lot to Lose. And we're going to be taking a look at Abraham when he was still known as Abram. So we're going to be, our main texts are going to be Genesis chapter 12 and 13. Um, and you may be thinking, what in the world does this have to do with New Year's at all? It, it'll, you know, God will make it plain. So just, just hold on. So we're going to pray and then we'll get into uh, the message. Father, thank you so much for the fact that your presence is always with us. Uh, thank you that when we gather together on Sunday mornings, it seems like an extra dose of your presence as we gather together. Thank you for the way you're already stirring and moving in our hearts this morning. I ask that as I bring the word, that it would be what you want said, and that it would go forth and bring life and bring change because that's what you desire. That it would bring transformation, that it would bring a desire to be closer to you because that's what you desire. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we're gonna get started in Genesis chapter 12, starting at verse one. So the scripture is gonna be up there, and if you um, have your own Bible, you can do that as well. All right, starting at verse one. The Lord said to Abram, leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram departed as the Lord had instructed, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he left Haran. All right, so if you notice, God did not say, listen, Abram, got a proposition. You know, I'm gonna let you think about it. Take 48 hours, take the weekend, consider whether or not you want to accept this or not. Okay, this is not like Mission Impossible where, you know, you get to choose um, or whatever. So, um, and Abram didn't need to do any of this. I mean, he was like set. So think about it. He's got his family, his people are there, his wife is there, um, he's got his own thing going on, and yet he actually chooses to do this thing that he has very little detail about, okay? So think about it. We like comfort. The things that are comfortable to us, where we live, I mean, even if we don't particularly like it, we're still comfortable with it because we know it. Where we live, who we're living with, what we're doing as a job, okay? It's the things that we know so that's why they're comfortable, even if we may not really like it. I, just, being, just being honest, okay? You may not like who you're living with. If you're married, don't raise your hand. Talk to Pastor Chase after service, okay? Um, you know, I just, sometimes there are issues. We may not like where we're working, but it's what we know. It's less scary than trying to apply for jobs uh, and maybe get a no, okay? So when I think of comfort, I think of this picture right here, which is this super comfy blanket, uh, like fresh out of the dryer. So it's like warm and cozy. And um, I'm watching my favorite TV show, which currently happens to be Father Brown on BritBox, just saying. Um, and maybe I've got a really nice tomato soup and grilled cheese sandwich. Okay, so like it's comfy day, all right? Um, that's what I like. 
what God is calling Abram to is not that. Okay? It is not the known. It is not the comfiness. Um, and notice that in verse 4, after God said, here's what you need to leave, Abraham says, okay, yep, I'm on it. Lot comes with him. And I'm like, okay, aren't you part of like the relatives, your father's family, you know, sort of thing? All right, so if you're thinking, where does Lot fit in? Let me show you. Here's the family tree. All right, so Abram's father's name was Terah, and he had three sons, Abram, Nahor, and Haran. Haran is Lot's father. So if you're familiar with Sunday school and you've heard about Abraham, he lived in Ur of the Chaldeans. That was, you know, he left the land of Ur. That's where their whole family was from. And I didn't, know, didn't realize this until I was studying for our message today, that actually um, Abram's dad wanted to move them to Canaan. And so on the way from leaving Ur to Canaan, they stopped in Haran. They place called Haran, and that's where they, so that's where Abram was when God called him out to basically finish the trip, okay? So um, I was like, what? I didn't realize. So the things, you know, the more you read, the more you learn, right? All right, so that is, um, that's the thing. God's calling him to a place that he doesn't have the full details of what this all is going to look like. And Lot comes with him. So what I find interesting about that is God doesn't say, um, so why is Lot here? Uh, what, what's, what's, you know, he's got to go and I'll wait to give you the next move until he's out. Nope, doesn't say that. How many times have you and I brought our comfort thing with us when God told us to like, okay, here's the thing I have for you to do or go. And we're like, okay, well, I'm gonna bring my comfort stuff. I think of Lot as like parents who've traveled with little children and you forgot the binky or the blanket, or the stuffed animal, and you're going to stay at relatives, and you're like halfway there and realize, <gasps> it's about to be a disaster. <laughs> and you turn around and go back. Yes, you know, one time of that, and then you're double, triple checking every time to make sure we got the blanket, or the stuffed animal, like whatever that is. I kind of see Lot as that because i think in jewish culture which is very different than our culture here in the united states where we aren't as close to all of our family um i wish i could have pulled the picture up but there was a message that it was either ben or pastor chase did where they showed what a house looked like in jewish culture with the poles that were there so that they could build up because they just added to their family household so Abram would have been used to Lot being around all the time and everything like that. And so he maybe didn't think anything about, hey, Unc, I'm going to go with you on this trip. This sounds exciting, okay? Um, even though no idea what's going to be happening. So Abram leaves with his people. He's got his wife. He's got his livestock, um, all his wealth, his servants. Lot has whatever he has that he's bringing as well, and they head off to the land of Canaan. They get there. God says, I'm going to give this land to your descendants, and Abram builds an altar, worships the Lord. Then famine hits Canaan. You can read all this in the rest of chapter 12, uh, so I'm not lying. You can go and look, okay? Uh, they go, Abram and Sarah go to Egypt, on the way there, Abram's like, listen, you're hot. Pharaoh's going to know that, so I'm going to need you to say you're my sister. So they don't kill me, and then, you know, so, right, right. So that's, that's what's happening. So they do that. 
Of course, Pharaoh gives, and his people are giving him all kinds of gifts because they're trying to be like, okay, this is the guy we're over so that we can get the, get, get the sister. Only God sends plagues to Pharaoh and his household because Abram, no, lying does not make this work. And so Pharaoh gives them the boot and says, you and your things, and we'll escort you to the border just to make sure that, you know, you actually leave. Well, they end up going back to the place where they had been before, and it's between Bethel and Haye um, that they had been before and actually had built a second altar because God had said, this is the place. I'm going to give this land to you and your descendants. So, at this point, when he leaves Egypt, now he's like mega wealthy, all right? And Comfort, aka Lot, has gained wealth along with his uncle. So now they're both living in the same area, and they both have a lot of stuff. So we're going to look at chapter 13, and we're going to start at verse 5. Lot, who was traveling with Abram, also become very wealthy with flocks of sheep and goats, herds of cattle, and many tents. But the land could not support both Abram and Lot with all their flocks and herds living so close together. So dispute broke out between the herdsmen of Abram and Lot. So notice that it says that the land couldn't support both of them. Now, let's go back to something I mentioned earlier. Was Lot even supposed to be there? Sometimes what starts comfortable becomes uncomfortable. And there's a reason, especially if God has a plan for where he is taking you and I. Because we love our comfort. Now, some people like to say, oh, I'm not a creature of habit. I'm this or that. No. Mm -mm. Okay. Like, are you sitting in the same row or vicinity every Sunday, okay? When you go to work, do you, do you park in about the same place every time you get to work in the parking lot, okay? If you go to the grocery store, do you park in about the same place every time? Do you grocery shop in about the same order every time you're in the store? Yes. Yes, this is to ensure we don't forget something, usually. Um, and hopefully you have a list, because otherwise, mm, um, you're definitely going to forget. <laughs> so, okay, so the land couldn't support both of everyone. So God's really making it plain that uh, this isn't what I want you to do. Lot wasn't really a part of what this is. And so... Um, we're well, going to start causing some issues, okay? Because it seems initially like this is a good plan. Comfort initially seems like this is fantastic. And then what do you and I do when it starts becoming uncomfortable? Do we try to like, okay, let me, let me get rid of what's now uncomfortable? No, we try to make it work. We try to make sure that the uncomfortable and the comfortable, like, let me see what I can do to try to marry these two things together. And it's like oil and water, like, it does not work. But we are determined, we are determined that, yep, no, I'm going to make this thing for sure. So for me, this month marks 12 years since moving to Grand Rapids. So I used to live in Lansing. And when I lived in Lansing, things were great, had a good job, all that, um, friends, church family, all the things, and then I lost my job. And then it was like, okay, I've got to figure out what is going to be next. Well, during the job search, I started seeing a guy that lived here in Grand Rapids. But I still had my life in Lansing, so I would come visit him. But then my job search and everything else was like I was trying to keep all the things I already knew, which was Lansing, and this guy that, I, that lived here in a place that I wasn't really familiar with. And I was like, okay, I can make this work. But I was coming home from a junior league meeting. 
coming home from a junior league meeting and I remember sitting at the traffic light, uh, Lake Lansing Road, and I don't remember what, but I can picture it in my mind. And I was like, man, I don't know what, what I need to do. And he's like, you have to pick one or the other. You are going to have to make a choice. You can't try these both together. It's not going to work. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, uh, typically for me, I'm like, let me do the pros and cons and, you know, map it out and, you know, you know, the fleece test and like, are you sure of the, no. I just decided, okay, well, I'm going to go with the unknown which is very uncharacteristic of me because I am an S, sure and steady. I like routine and I was willing to like jump into like, okay, well, let's see what happens. Um, had I not done that, I wouldn't know all of you fabulous people. Uh, so I am grateful for the fact that I did that. So lot represents those things that we find comfortable. Think of lot as a noun person, place, or thing. I don't have to name for you what your lot might be because you already know. You already know what it is. You already know what it is that if the pressure's on, you turn to that. When you get around certain things or people, you participate. If you're bored, but when you leave that, all that was seemingly filled and better is now empty. Doesn't feel any better. You're right back where you were before. So how do we lose a lot? Some of you are not gonna like this answer because it's uncomfortable. Uh, you're going to have to let Lot go. Like, you are going to have, like, it's not like God, because I remember, like, there was a couple guys that I had seen before that I was like, God, can you just have them decide that it's not working out? <laughs> so I didn't have to say anything. Um, God said no. Uh, you, you go ahead and go ahead and go ahead and do it. And I was like, dang it. <clears throat> anyway, so let's take a look at uh, verse 8 of chapter 13. Finally, Abram said to Lot, let's not allow this conflict come between us or our herdsmen. After all, we are close relatives. The whole countryside is open to you. Take your choice of any section of the land you want and we will separate. Abram had to be the one. Lot didn't say, you know what, maybe we should do something else. Abram had to actually say to Lot, listen, because I care about our relationship, it's going to be better if we separate. The relationship overall, for it to be in a good place, we are going to have to figure out. So there's plenty of space. We got to separate it out. Let me tell you what comfort's never going to do. Never going to come to you and say, you know what? I've overstayed my welcome. I think it's time that I be on my way. Comfort is never going to do that. Although we want it to. I mean, if we're honest, we want comfort to just decide it's done. No, that's not, that's not it. Okay? So this morning, I want us to think about a few things. I want us to think about the lot that's in our life. I want us to think about the calling that God has on our lives. The places and spaces he may be calling us to that we have very little detail about. And so, out of fear, we will let comfort dictate the outcome. Out of fear, we will let comfort hold us back. 
So I want us to give an opportunity to think about this. Now, some of us in the room may be in a season of Thanksgiving because we just came out of a lot. We, are, we just let a lot go. And so let's be praising the Lord for that. But I want to give us an opportunity to think about the lot that we have and what God has called each of us to. Because he has a purpose for each of us. And it may not be, you know, the biggest YouTube channel, it may not be the biggest podcast, but it may be the influence you have with your coworkers at work. It may be the influence that you have with your neighbors where you live. It may be the influence that you have with family. But there's gonna be a lot that has to go for that to actually become fruitful. You don't understand the potential generational impact that is happening. Where God took Abraham was a blessing for all of us that are sitting here in this room. But we're holding out because we want comfort. So I want to give us an opportunity to um, reflect on that and bring some things to God. We thank you for the fact we have a new day and that your mercies are new every morning. We thank you for the graciousness with which you work with us in our lives. the way that you don't immediately tell us we've got to cut the comfort off. But you will take us to a place where we've got to make a choice. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the change he's made in my life. Thank you for each of the people that is here or watching online and the change you've made in each of their lives as well. And the impact that that has on them. And how that can change trajectory of their families. Thank you. We praise and worship you this morning. We love you. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.